Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Gary S. Chan, who is in St. Louis, Missouri. How are you doing, Gary? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on the show, John. Really excited to be here. Yeah, and Gary's uh, from a company called Alfizo, and he is an information security management consultant. And what we're going to talk today about today is a great subject. Uh, I know so many people are struggling with email and email marketing, and, and even just regular email, getting it through to, to the right people because it's getting caught up in spam filters and all of that. And it's a real source of frustration to people who are sending like legitimate emails, but they can't get them through. So one of the things Gary uh, companies hire Gary to do, to do is to look at all their systems and their vulnerabilities and all of that kind of stuff. So um, Gary understands what it takes for legitimate emails and that to, uh, to be optimized, to be as deliverable as possible. So, um, so Gary, uh, today, most people, when they're sending out emails, they don't really know whether they're getting caught in spam filters or not. So um, maybe let's start there. I mean, how do you even start to know what's happening to your emails? Sure. Well, one of the easiest things to do is to just set up some, uh, just set up some email addresses with some, uh, with like Outlook.com, uh, for example. So if you want to know how Microsoft might categorize your email, uh, that's Perfect. That's free. You can just send emails to that. Uh, obviously, a lot of people use G Suite, so you might want to set up a free email account with Gmail. Um, but uh, basically, it's just setting up uh, some email accounts, uh, having them uh, sending emails to it, seeing what happens. You can also ask some of your friends who work at different companies uh, to see whether or not they're getting the emails. Um, and of, of course, if you're willing to spend some money, you can always uh, purchase uh, some subscription services uh, or maybe hire some folks to uh, actually do this for you on an ongoing basis so you don't have to do that. So there are a few different ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so let's talk a bit about spam filters because uh, spam filters seem to have gotten so. Um, I mean, obviously everybody's using them, but they they seem to be like almost catch alls now. It's almost like it's 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 gone so far that it's really hard to squeeze past the spam filters. So, yep. what's going on? What's going on with spam filters? Well, essentially, they're just getting smarter all the time. Everybody's now using artificial intelligence to categorize these things. And ironically, if you're a if you're a a spammer, and and I say uh, that you know as an illegitimate illegitimately uh, doing, you mm -hmm. actually know how to bypass a lot of these things. Whereas uh, corporate marketing folks uh, generally play by the rules, and and they they don't. Uh, but to answer your question, though, the artificial intelligence will do a number of different things, right? Whenever you uh, get an email, if you click on the you know. This this is spam or this is phishing or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Um, basically, it marks it uh, and it says, okay, this is spam, at least according to John, this is spam. Now, if 20 other people start marking it, then it's going to say, well, this is probably spam. And if a thousand right. people mark it, then it probably is, right? And it looks at all of the characteristics of all of these. You know, is it coming from a particular person, particular location, particular time of day? It looks at all of these hundreds of variables to sort of figure out, you know, where, um, you know, that line is on legitimate and illegitimate. And so basically nobody knows exactly what the rules are because the computer is constantly updating it. Um, but mm -hmm. that's basically the way that it works. Are there any telltale signs that your emails are getting caught in spam filters? I mean, particularly, so for instance, like if you send out some emails and they're opened instantly, is that a sign that they're getting caught? Oh, not necessarily. Um, I mean, I, I, it really kind of depends. Uh, there, It depends on the recipient. Sometimes they do have uh, these uh, tools that will automatically open all the links so you know look like it was read when it wasn't that's actually pretty rare um uh, so I, I would say that if you're getting a lot lower response than you were before that might be a sign that you might want to optimize but honestly the best thing to do is really just test it uh, just send the email and see whether or not you're even getting it so that way you can distinguish between it not even making it to the mailbox of your recipient uh, versus you just having poor messaging Mm -hmm. So then what are some of the ways you can optimize email in order to, to increase your chances of getting through? Sure. Well, the first biggest thing that I, I, I think a lot of people uh, fail to do is really segregate the marketing emails 
from the transactional emails, from you know, your just you sending emails as John, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So personal emails, for example. Um, and the reason you want to separate these is because um, what happens is all these spam filters and all of these things, they, they try to look for patterns, right? Uh, and so if, for example, you send out a thousand marketing emails that just happens to be really bad that time and a lot of people man you know, market as spam, but you also personally sent, you know, like 50 emails that you personally wrote to people that was totally legit. Um, well, you've got, you know, it's 50 versus a thousand. So now mm -hmm. all of your emails are going to go to spam, right? So I would say the first thing that people need to do is to segment between marketing emails, which is me sending it on mass to a bunch of people, transactional emails, which are really specific to an event. Like if you buy something from Amazon, it says, Hey, thank you very much for your order. You, you bought this, you know, whatever coat hanger. Right. And then that's a transactional email. Uh, and then uh, from your personal emails. And then after you do that, um, you know, there's a number of things that you need to understand. Uh, I'm just going to list out high level categories sure. and we can talk about any of these, right? Um, there's the, there's the law. Um, there's, uh, you know, what you're going to do. How do you even clean up your uh, mailing list? Um, the technical setup uh, of how you're, you know, configuring all of the, um, the servers and, and all that other stuff, the testing that we talked a little bit about. Um, then obviously the writing, the content, the, the types of words that you're using. Uh, and also, um, you know, when you're, you're sending it and, and, and how all of these things sort of uh, come together, like um, all of these things, that combination actually affects your entire deliverability. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's very interesting. So let's just dive in for a moment, just at, at a high level on, on the law, because obviously laws evolve all the time. But I think it's good for a quick refresher for people to understand what the laws are around email. Sure. Uh, so first off, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, sure just, uh, uh, <laughs> so uh, don't take this as legal advice. Um, but essentially, there's something called the CAN SPAM Act is C-A-N-S-P-A-M for those people who want to look it up. Uh, and you can just read it. There are like eight different things you have to do. And, and, and one of them uh, is putting a physical mailing address in there, right? So if you put a physical mailing address at the bottom of your email that says, you know, 123 Main Street, uh, some of these uh, spam filters will actually pick up on that and say, ha, huh, this guy has a valid um, email, uh, has a, not, not email, uh, physical mailing address. Um, and so it's less likely to be spam. Uh, so that is one thing that kind of helps with that. Um, but yeah, there are a bunch of different uh, things in there that uh, your readers might want to, or your listeners might want to mm -hmm. read up on. Yeah, so the can spam laws certainly one that you should definitely look at and read and understand uh, if you're going to be emailing. Um, then the other thing, Gary, I think a lot of people don't understand the the technical setup uh, side of things, and sometimes you know maybe it's maybe you're a small company, you don't even know how to do this, and maybe you want to go and find an expert to set it up because there's a lot of things technically that if you get if you do it correctly will increase your chances but there's things that maybe if they're not set up properly that you'd never you know the regular person would never know about um that could be seriously impacting their email that's right um so uh, just as a, a few different examples right um so there's stuff that you do control uh so for example uh, if you set up your what's called spf and DKIM, uh, those are just configuration settings. I won't mm -hmm. go into all the technical specifics, sure, but sure. basically they um, they ensure that uh, people can't just spoof you, uh, that you know, if you're sending an email as John, um, that it will come across as John and coming across from that domain. So that way when other people pretending to be you who don't own the domain, um, that they can't send it, uh, or rather if they do, that it will get flagged as spam. And what happens, is that when people set up their email, when they first set it up, it's all automated and that works and it works fine. But then they go sign up for a CRM system and mm -hmm. that CRM system, um, they don't configure it. They just put in their email address and then off they go. Well, that system is sending email that says that it's coming from John, but it hasn't actually been authorized. Um, so um, if that's the case, then basically it's failing all of these checks when it gets to the spam filter and it says, oh, I just got an email from John, but John didn't actually authorize this. So I think it might be spam. So it throws in the spam box. Um, and there's other stuff that you don't really control. Like, for example, if you, uh, you're a small business and you, you, you buy your email from them, um, you, your email service from them, uh, well, if, if they are using the server that is also used by 50 other companies and all of those guys are spamming people, then 
you know, then the, all those tools are going to think you're just one of those other 50 people because you're all using the same server, right? So, because spammers tend to use the same servers, they just have different names and whatever. They just make them all up and they send them out. So you kind of look like a spammer if some of the other people are. Um, so there are a number of different things that, that we can do um, to sort of make it uh, look more legit or actually be legit coming from you. Yeah, and I think it's really important. I mean, especially if you're a small business and or, or a mid-sized business, maybe you don't have this expertise in-house. It's really important to go find somebody to make sure everything is configured uh, is configured properly. Uh, because as, as Gary pointed out, there's these small things that look like small things, but actually can have catastrophic catastrophic impacts on your email if they're not taken care of. And that was a great point that you just made a few minutes ago. Like if you're buying your service from someone, you may end up with a bunch of other people and, and then you suddenly inherit all of their practices. So there are things that you need to take into account and seriously think about when you're setting up your email service. Um, the other thing is, uh, is content, Gary. This is probably the most challenging thing for most people is, uh, is is the right content, you know, the right subject lines, all of those kind of things. Are there Are there easy mistakes to avoid when it comes to content? So yeah, um, and actually, uh, I'm just going to share this aside with you. Um, uh, do you know why a lot of uh, spammers actually misspell their words? No. Uh, so it's actually not because they have poor English. It's actually done purposefully because the spam filters, uh, they have what are uh, email uh, word lists that they look for. So like if you have the word free in there a whole lot of times, uh, that mm -hmm. it may, it's more likely to, to categorize it as spam. Well, if you misspell free to something else where people can still understand it, but it's not a real word, it's probably not in the spam list. Uh, so, okay. so if you spell um, free with three E's, would it get through? Um, so yeah, it probably would actually, um, yeah. because that's just an uncommon spelling. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just kind of interesting um, that a lot of these uh, spammers have actually figured out how to bypass the spam filters. Um, but yeah, in terms of the the right mar uh, content marketing, uh, you know, from a marketing standpoint, I'm not the right guy to ask. But uh, from a, a security perspective, certainly, if there's things that you would you know, if that you that would trigger you, right? Hey, free this or uh, working from home for a million dollars a day mm -hmm. or something. Um, these are all things that would would trigger in the spam filter. So if it sort of alerts you when you get that first, ah, uh, you know, then that's probably something that would also trigger on the spam filter. Yeah. So I mean, I think there, Gary, there's a great example. What you just said there is is maybe start exactly when you're looking to create emails and content. Maybe look at the emails that you would open. And also look at the emails that you would immediately dismiss or you would hit, yeah, this is spam or whatever, and make sure that you're, that you're, uh, that you're focusing on the ones, uh, your content on the, on the type of ones that you, that you would open and not on the type of ones that you would delete immediately. Yeah, no, absolutely. And if you don't have it configured properly, you, you probably should go get it done soon because once you're on those blacklists, it's really hard to get off. And in some cases, they won't even, once you're on it, those blacklists won't even remove you, like no matter what, they just won't. That's just their policy. Yeah, and that's also another good thing is that you should always check, uh, check your domain health right uh, and mm -hmm. make sure that you're not that you're not turning up on those blacklists because those are pretty easy things to do i mean there's a lot of tools out there right gary where you can check your your domain health yeah no absolutely i i like to use mxtoolbox.com that's mxtoolbox.com uh, yeah if you go there you put your domain in uh, i do it, you do need to understand a little bit of uh, technical stuff to be able to use it really well but um uh, that'll give you some ideas uh, also you can do a blacklist check on there yeah, and basically, for those who don't understand, what what does it mean when you end up on a blacklist, and who compiles these blacklists? So, uh, when you're on a blacklist, it just means that you are uh, categorized as a potential spammer or other nefarious actor. Uh, so, what happens is, if you're on the spam list, then uh, whenever you send an email uh, and the and the spam uh, tool sees it and it's on the blacklist, they're more likely to categorize you as spam. Uh, so uh, there are, I don't know, like 50 or probably even more lists out there. Um, and so uh, it's, they're all different organizations. Some of them are for profit, some are not for profit. You'll actually get a pretty good list from mxtoolbox.com. 
Um, and uh, th those are uh, some very common um, blacklists. Um, and there are probably like four of them I, you know, that are used by pretty much every major vendor. So if you're on one of those, then you definitely have a problem. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're not, but you're on some of the other smaller ones, uh, then you might want, just want to look at what you're doing. Um, you know, it, it may not be the end of the world, but, uh, but you definitely have some problems. Yeah, so I mean, so basically, uh, you should be checking on on a you know on a, fa a fairly frequent basis just to make sure that you're not showing up on on any of these uh, any of these blacklists. And then, um, Gary, what do you see for the uh, for the future of email? Because as we said, like spam filters are getting more sophisticated. AI is playing a bigger role. All of these things. Like, how do you, um, where do you see? Uh, email security going in the future and, and how are how are people going to be able to compete with it uh, well i don't think email is going any anywhere anytime soon uh, it people still use it all the time when i sign up for something on a website they ask me for my email address so i don't think it's going anywhere uh going away anytime soon uh, and in terms of the tools, they're getting more sophisticated all the time. Uh, and with the artificial intelligence, I mean, who knows how they're going to be categorizing the things tomorrow. I know that they keep rolling out new features like a focused inbox for uh, Microsoft and Gmail has their, uh, you know, sort of your prime, your different tabs where they sort of segregate them out. So you've already got these major vendors that are trying to not only categorize be between spam and not spam, but also the things that should um, uh, capture your attention versus the things that might be lower priority. And so I think in the future, um, the mar marketing teams are going to want to look at not just spam versus not spam, but also how to get into that focused inbox, um, you know, so that the recipients get it right away. Uh, I think that that part isn't quite there yet, um, but uh, it's moving in that direction. Yeah, no, I can I can agree more. I think that is uh, that is going to be a massive challenge going forward. Uh, is getting into those focused inboxes and not ending up in in one of the other ones. Well, listen, Gary, this has been fantastic. All of Gary's information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before you we go, can you please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Sure. Uh, so I work. Uh, I'm an information security specialist. So I help businesses. Um, basically meet compliance or uh, improve things uh, that are related to security, for example, like with uh, email optimization. Uh, if you want to reach me, you can go to alfizo, A-L-F-I-Z-O dot com. Uh, and at the bottom, you'll see a, a contact form. Uh, I'd also like to mention that uh, for businesses, uh, a lot of times they are looking for information security awareness training for their employees, and they can get that for free also at start dash alpha uh, sorry start dash training dot alfizo dot com uh, and so you can do that your employees can watch some videos and um, take some quizzes uh, basically all for free so um, that's fantastic. how you can reach me yeah that's fantastic and I would encourage people to go ahead and uh, and and visit the site and then take those uh, security awareness assessments and that because uh, you know security is such a, a major issue and unfortunately it's it's often like the biggest security breaches often happen just by you know lack of knowledge on behalf of the people who end up being the victims of it so it's always good to to uh, make sure everybody in your company is security aware um, so thanks again, Gary. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine. I'm Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.